This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map for suppressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Bellingwold. But before that, this video is brought to you by Chasey Dog and Peter Does Farming. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Bellingwold map can be found over at the farmingsimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the one point of release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to the village of Bellingwold. This is a village in a small municipality of the Netherlands and located on the German border. This map is inspired by a real life location and has 58 fields one small biogas plant, one main farm, and a small farm. There is also land for animals, and it is the land where animals such as sheep, cows, pigs, and chicken live. That's great. Now, I will tell you that this map has a ton, an absolute ton of required mods. So in addition to the mods, we typically use when we look at maps, which is additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. We are also going to be using the required mods, which consist of barn with chicken coop, big garage, brick buildings, brick shed with barn, cow barn 17 by 14, farm building with cows, garage for machines, garage with silos, garage with storage, garage with sliding doors, metal shed, metal shed, and metal shed. That's right. I did not repeat myself. There are three mods, all named metal shed, all version 1.0 the old farm building set, the old farm package, and the old store shed. Well, we're also going to get a pack of small buildings and also a small buildings pack, just in case we didn't have enough packs of small buildings. That is the required mods. Now, we'll tell you, if you load this map up in a farm manager mode or start from scratch, you'll find the main farms are built out exactly how you see them here in a new farmer mode. In fact, you also own your starting machinery in all game modes. The only difference is you do not own any land in those alternate game modes. Now, in addition, I did load this map up on a low powered system with integrated graphics and had zero issues whatsoever running it without with steady 60 frames per second. So you should have no issues whatsoever running this map pretty much on anything that will launch Farming Simulator 22. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And this is a extremely small map. I would judge that this is probably one sixth the size of a standard map, if not smaller than that. Now we do have all our standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22 on this map. It is just going to be exceedingly small. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland screen. And we start out by owning farmland ID one, which is the main starting farm that is $66,000 to buy in any alternate game mode and is 3.29 acres. The animal farm, which is farmland ID2, can be bought for $33,540. There is a biogas plant located right here. You will have to buy the BGA at the BGA. It is not on buyable land per se. And in addition, we have farmland ID3 that does have a couple sheds on it. And if you do buy, you can make use of that is going to be $19,440. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are. If those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? Now you see overall, most of this farmland is smaller than one hectare in size. There are a few pieces of farmland like farmland ID 36. That is the general exception. Let's go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And here we've got one field, 23, 1.24 hectares in size. Every other field to this point has been less than a single hectare and often significantly smaller than a single hectare. In fact, that is going to be the biggest field on the map. Field 23 at 1.24 hectares. This map does have the standard crop counter available to us in Farm Sim 22. And if we take a look at our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. They're once again available to us in FS 22, as well as our eggs, wool, and milk. 
and our silage, hay straw, and grass. Now, one thing to note is we do not have the ability to sell our wood chips. And I do bring that up because we do have a sawmill on this map. And if you do own a sawmill, of course, you will be producing wood chips. Now, with respect to our base game production items, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items over at the supermarket. We do not have the ability to buy bulk lime, nor do we have the ability of getting rid of our stones. So if you do play with stones enabled, you will need to put down your own sell point for those stones. Those wanting to play with the platinum expansion, well, don't worry about it. You're not going to be able to do it here unless you put down your own sell point. And then if you have the premium expansion, you are in luck because the supermarket is going to accept everything that is available to produce in the premium expansion. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability of getting rid of our separated manure. And if you are playing with straw harvest, your hay and straw pellets can also be sold at the animal dealer. We start out with a decent list of starting equipment, given the fact that all of these fields are pretty small in size. This map is clearly designed for small machinery. We have three animal sets. We have the animal barn, a cow barn with chicken coop, and a pigsty. That is over at Farmland ID 2, the animal farm, if you will. We do have contracts available on this map. We do not own any of the production chains, and we do not have any collectibles. Let's go and take a look at that starting fleet. We start out with the Massey Ferguson 5S135, as well as the Massey Ferguson 4710M, and the Bure 6105. We have our Dutes Far Top Liner 4090H Harvester that is paired up with the Harvester Header, and we do not this time have our Header Trailer. We have the Welger DK115 Trailer as well as the ANS 1900 Small Trailer 1.3 cubic meters of product stored there. We have the Pottinger Servo 25 as well as the Raid EG39 Cultivator. We have the Nordstein HK25 NS 3030 Cedar and power harrow combination then we wrap it all up with the falcon 3 planter this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements now let's go ahead and take a look kind of at the starting farm here we do have several sheds and all of these sheds are basically going to be customized sheds or custom sheds due to the plethora of required mods it is good to see that these are basically being used at this farm and at the secondary animal farm we have our farm silo here so we have our dump point and our fill pipe right there we have trigger markers to turn off the light. And we can unfold. The blower. And fold the blower back up to go. Well, I don't know where it went. Sitting around the back. I mean, it was right here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so when it's... It's put away, and then it comes back. The animations must be slow. There it goes. Got our harvester, harvester header. We have our farmhouse over here with our wardrobe trigger on the ground and then our sleep trigger up at the steps. Some more of our machinery. And that is pretty much the starting farm location. Now I will tell you that everything here at this farm can be sold with respect to buildings. If you don't like any of these buildings, you don't have to worry about it because you can sell each and every one of them.
Now I'm just going to jump the fence here. We can sell the fence also. And you're going to see that... Well, here we have the animal farm. So it's possible to kind of merge these two together. If you wanted to do that. And we can sell all the buildings down here at the animal farm as well. We have a sheep building. Now the sheep building did not pop until we purchased the farm here. We have our wall spawn point. We have our food point for our sheep and 25 sheep in this building. Directly in front of us, we have our chicken coop. And we're going to be able to hold 50 chickens in our coop. We have our food dump, and I was looking all around for an area marked that would imply where our eggs are going to spawn at. And I can tell you that I did not see that. Now, I am guessing that our eggs may spawn over here. That is merely a guess. Or they may spawn directly in front of here. I don't think they're going to spawn inside of there. But I would like to have seen that show up. I assume that's going to be a problem with the um, with the mod because it is part of the required mods. We have our water trigger. And then we have our cow barn here. So we have our milk trigger. Around the corner we have our drop off trigger. 15 cows here. We have our slurry point, and we have our food trough and a straw trigger on the inside. Right there. And then we have our pigs. So we have our slurry point. We have our food and water, and then inside, we're going to be able to drop off 15 pigs for here. And then I have to say, I really... Really feel sorry for the, uh, the houses that live right up against this animal farm. Because I'm sure, well, I'm sure these pigs, they are not the best smelling critters around. Let's jump back here and take a look at our soil map. We are using the Alpine soil map that is a part of the Precision Farming mod. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. So you can see to the east of the farm, we've got some silty clay. To the north of the farm, we have a fair bit of loamy sand and sandy loam. As I mentioned, we can sell the buildings at both the starting farm, which is located right there, and the animal farm, which is located right here. And as we can see from a quick kind of spin around, a lot of these really small fields, well, they can be fairly easily merged together <laughs> into bigger fields if you are looking to maybe use a little bit larger machinery. But overall, there is not a whole lot of land on this map. So this map includes four productions being built in. The one directly to the west of the starting farm is going to be the sawmill that's going to be located here. So we have our pallet spawn point there. We have our interactive icon. We have our wood cell trigger. And then we have our wood chip spawn point. Again, we do not have the ability to sell any wood chips. So you will need to put a point down or sell point down for that. Directly north of the sawmill on the extreme northwest portion of the map. We have our animal dealer and our animal dealer bale cell trigger, which is located here along the side. And the animal dealer itself is going to be located here at the front. Continuing across the northern part of the map, we're going to make our way over to the biogas plant. This map has the BGA, a grain mill, a spinnery, and a sawmill as far as productions being built in 
So we are going to be giving the map a full point with respect to productions built in or areas set aside for such. So here we have a small biogas plant. We have our interactive icon. We have our digester. We have our dump point for our slurry. And we have our digestate fill point. We do have two three-sided silage bunkers here. These bunkers are permanently a part of the map. I was not able to sell them after I purchased the BGA. And in fact, with respect to trying to sell the biogas plant, I got money for it, but the buildings themselves did not go away. Just south from the BGA, we do have a laundromat. And as best as I can tell, this is decorative, but we do have trigger markers here around the back. So I really don't know what is going on. This is not on buyable land. And there is no indicator here basically showing you that it is any sort of a cell point hotspot. Directly south of the laundromat, we have our fuel station. We have our spinnery. And the spinnery is production. We have our interactive icon, our dump point. And I'm just going to assume that the trigger markers here for the dump point also indicate where the pallets are going to spawn at. If not, well, then hopefully they spawn over here on the other side of the building. But we really do not see that clearly indicated. Just down from that, we do have our vehicle shop. So we have our dealer trigger located right there. And then we have our dealer purchase trigger. Now, I'm not too worried about the size of the spawn point here for our machinery because of the fact that we this is clearly a map designed for small machinery. You shouldn't have too much trouble in spawning in enough small machinery here to get you going without having to clear out the area. And then our final production is going to be our grain mill, which is located right here. We have an interactive icon, our dump point, and our pallet spawn point. Now the one and only cell point on the map for pretty much everything is going to be our grocery. And our grocery is located right over here. With the dump point around the back. And to just give you a little bit of a frame of reference, there's the animal farm. There is the main farm. And then I mentioned this was farmland ID three. We had a little bit of a grass area here and a couple buildings. Those buildings are usable if you do purchase the land. So you've got that also available to you. So let's talk about our scoring real quick because that is pretty much the entirety of the map. We're going to give a map a full point with respect to production built in and area set aside for such, as I said earlier. We're giving the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell all red basing crops, animal outputs, and productions. Even though we do not have the ability to sell lime or buy bulk lime, sorry, or sell stones, we do not necessarily take off points for those facts. Both farm areas can be customizable, the animal farm and the main farm, so we are giving the map a full point there, as well as a full point with respect to using the new texturing technique across all the buildings and ground textures. What we are going to do, though, is we are going to be taking a quarter of a point off because, well, there are a few things with respect to triggers being clearly marked. The spinnery, not super clear where our wool is going to spawn at. This laundry mat, which just appears to be a deco element because we cannot actually buy the land. Let me just show you that. But by 35, it's carved out of the area around this laundromat, and I can't buy the laundromat at all. It is part of the unbuyable land, yet there is a trigger marker there. Now, that may be residual of something else and not an actual cell point for the map itself, but I would like to see that go away if indeed it does not have any sort of purpose. And then over at the animal farm, we do have the chicken coop, which is unclear where the eggs are going to spawn as well. So again, we're going to take a quarter point off. Maybe we should take a half a point off because there's at least three 
things of ambiguity on such a small map. So that's going to wrap this map up with a score of 4.75 out of 5 if you're feeling generous. If you're being a little bit more nitpicky, then maybe 4.5 out of 5. I would love to know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to this map. Clearly it is a small map. I don't know if I would call it a micro map or not, but it is clearly a small map designed for small machinery. And it can be ideal for those who are looking to get in, get out, get a little bit of farming done, get a little chill on when they can try to find a couple minutes here and there, but they just don't have a large amount of time to invest in a larger scale project. And until next time, happy farming.